call the meeting to order. Um, we will begin with a silent prayer. Roll call, Mrs. Franks. Mayor Kendall. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Costantino. Uh, uh. Oh. oh my goodness. I forgot to. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Still on the plaque, <laughs> still on the plaque too. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Councilwoman Costantino. Present. Councilman Jenny. Here. Councilwoman Pies. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Here. Councilwoman Williams. Present. Councilman Tucson. Here. And City Manager Shemansky. Here. And City Attorney Diwali. Here. All right. Thank you. We will have a presentation by um, the Beautification Commission. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Marion Modlin. I have the commissioners, fellow commissioners join me, please. Chair of the Harper West Beautification Commission. Hello, everyone. I'm the Chair of Montgomery. I'm proud of the Commission. Hi, Mike Andrasik. I want to welcome everyone tonight. Uh, before we present the awards, I just wanted to tell you how we go through the process of choosing uh, the beautiful homes um, in Harper Woods. First of all, each one of us is assigned an area. And we get in our cars, and usually around, I would say, mid to late June, we are kind of trolling up and down the streets. So you might see us, you know, slow down and drive, stop, back up, um, look at houses. We're trying to get house numbers. But we will gather uh, a number of homes in each area. And then once we have a group of homes, each of us, we nominate four homes. And then we turn that in to the city. And then we, we get a list, and then all of us revisit all the nominations again, and then we vote on them. But our nominations are not the only ones. We have neighbors that will maybe email or call in, they'll nominate a, um, a neighbor. And so we also compile those addresses into our list and as part of the voting process. So those of you here tonight, congratulations. We're so glad you're here. Um, in addition to voting for residential properties, we also nominate three businesses, local businesses. And what we're looking for is that, that curb appeal, that pride in ownership. So we're driving up and down you know, the, the streets, and we're looking for those um, beautiful homes that, that are, are loved. And, um, and we'll nominate them. And then when we go through the, the process, we'll drive again. And sometimes we're in a, in a van all together when we vote. Other times we're you know, just out and about on our own. And, um, and then at least two, uh, two of us commissioners will meet. We tally the votes. And then we submit um, the winners to the uh, city clerk's office. And then we just take it from there. I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. We are going to present the awards. So when you do get your award, if you can, when we call your name, if you could come up, and we're going to present the award, and then afterwards, we'd like to get a photo with everyone. Let's start up on this side here. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kathy and Jerry McCartney, Lennon Street. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
really nice. Thank you for keeping her for with so people. Alan Sangster. Laura Sangster. Oh, I'm sorry. Ross Common. Thank you. Congratulations to you. That's nice. I love your grandson. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh my God, I love those. Don and Kashandra Mazik from Buffet. <laughs> and they're on Buffet. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. All right. Good. John and Don Drozik. From Severn Street. I was excited. I did get a tour of the home. All I did was ask them to turn the sprinkler off. So, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to you. So it's nice to be here. It's great talking with you. Thank you. Oh, I've heard all the kudos about your house. Oh, thank you. Very Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we definitely raised property values in our Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole inside is better than Yeah. So, major, major, major. Family. Family. We believe in ourselves. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations. It was good talking with you earlier. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Donald and Sarah Ripkowski from Woodcrest. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. 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 <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. <Beautiful>. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for your service. And our last of the residential awards goes to Nicholas Dara of Woodcrest.
Congratulations. Thank you. Make sure you take that to 1191. I will. I will. You All right. <laughs> and the last beautification award tonight goes to our business, and that is this award is being given to the Gross Point Animal Adoption Society on Harper Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to put some pets in the front of there. Congratulations. Thank you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You hyped? <laughs> I went, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that was really nice. I knew that that would be cat. You can cut your question and you can stand with that. And on behalf of City of Harper Woods, congratulations and thank you for keeping our city beautiful. Can we get a group photo? Can we get a group photo? Okay. Uh, city council okay. members, they want us all to take pictures like with them. them. Can we all line up right here, yeah. all of us? Thank you. Maria, how do you want us? When you come on up. Yes. You Now, all of those for the beautification, we will excuse you. We know you may have other things to do, but if you wish to stay, you're more than welcome to stay, but it won't hurt our feelings if you get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, I need a motion to approve of, of the minutes. Yes. Motion. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman uh, Williams. Support. Okay. The motion to approve the minutes for the regular city council meeting held on November 1st, 2021. The special city council meeting held on November 8th, 2021. And the planning commission meeting held on November 3rd, 2021. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public comment on agenda items. Uh, is there anyone in the public would like to speak on anything on the agenda? Good, hearing none. Okay, let's go to E, consent agenda. I need a resolution. I'd like to make the resolution to approve yes. the consent agenda items one through five. Support. Okay. Support by Mrs. Councilwoman Pies. Any discussion? Seeing none. Roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kindle. Yes. Okay, resolution passes. Okay. We have no old business. So therefore, we move over to new business and city manager report. Uh, item G1, site plan, North Point, Eastland Center Development, Mayor and Council, at their November 3rd, 2021 meeting, the Planning Commission received and filed the updated site plan for the redevelopment at Eastland Center that had been submitted by North Point Development. They have recommended that the site plan be approved with the following conditions being met. One, the traffic study is approved by the city engineers. Two, truck ingress and egress from the site from Beaconsfield is prohibited and or managed to the city's satisfaction. And number three, the applicant provides evidence of their plan for cross access shared parking, utility or other easements. All such easements are subject to the review by the city attorney and must be recorded with Wayne County Register of Deeds. And four, the applicant receives all other necessary approvals from city or other public agencies. It is being brought before you again as several members of council had requested that they have an opportunity to review the updated site plan. Mayor, a motion is required. Madam Mayor? Yes. That's I'll offer the motion to receive and file the updated site plan submitted by North Point Development for the redevelopment of Eastland Center at 18000 Vernier Road. Support. Support. Supported by Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins. Je Jennings. Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a whole new name, Tom. I'm are. sorry. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Madam Mayor. Y yes. Um, first, I have to say that it was very difficult for me to see some of these plans on the, you know, the, the way that we, they were sent. And so I do have a couple of questions uh, that I'm a bit concerned about. Um, the first has to do with uh, trucks entering the property. Because as I'm looking at the uh, schematic, um, the westbound lanes, it looks like there's, there's going to be a truck lane or a lane that will lead directly into the property. But um, if the number of trucks exceeds the space for turning at any given time and giving traffic, you know, uh, there won't be a light there. There's going to be a light taken out. Um, I guess I'm concerned about buildup of trucks along westbound 8 Mile. Uh, and so I don't know whether there is a second turn that would be considered to allow access, whether the existing turn lane beyond the uh, proposed turn is going to be open, whether turn, the uh, trucks will be going onto the Eastland Drive section of the um, property. Uh, and so I just want to find out how access truck traffic is going to be handled on Vernier. We have a school right there. 
you know, we have a number of um, morning, you know, morning traffic tends to get a little busy, afternoon traffic. So I want to find out how truck traffic is going to be handled. Um, okay. Valid question. I, I, we have Tim Connor here in, and uh, from North Point, but I do want to say that there's a traffic study that's right. okay. in process right now that is going to determine what the resolution is for all the questions all you the just questions. asked. But if you gentlemen would care to comment on that. And you can ask him if that's the same question that you need from North Point. Okay, yes. I'll, I'll have that, sir. Thank you. Is this on? Yeah. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, Mark Polanski with North Point Development. Um, as was mentioned, we are under underway with review by MDOT and your city engineer with, for the traffic study. Uh, the good news is about the additional turn lane we're putting in is we can make that turn lane as long as it needs to be. Uh, so, so the study identifies the amount of uh, traffic we're anticipating enter the site at any given time and the turn lane will be built and designed to accommodate whatever the maximum traffic is that we would anticipate into this site. Um, the other good news is generally trucks aren't entering and exiting the site at the same peak hours as uh, say school traffic. Uh, so we, we generally have an employee peak hour time which is you know early in the mornings and then you know three, four, or five o'clock in the evenings. Trucks are generally coming more sporadic throughout the day. They aren't all arriving first thing in the morning. They aren't all leaving at the exact same time. So, uh, you know, the, the trucks and cars generally uh, cooperate well together. They don't back up, you know, additional traffic through that turn lane. So uh, the, the study that's being reviewed by everybody currently will accommodate any anticipated traffic we will produce. Okay, while I have you there, yep. there's another question I have, and that is on what you're calling wet extended detention basin. And yes. when I look up the term, what I see is that it holds water in a permanent pool. Correct. All right, and so um, we'll have, and I'm sure they will be lovely, but my concern has to do with the fact that we've got high school right there, we've got you know the middle school where a lot of the kids are gonna be passing these detention basins. And I wanna make certain that enough is going to be done so that kids, there have been accidents where kids have drowned. Um, it's an appealing kind of thing, you know, uh, for a kid, especially if they haven't grown up around something like this. Um, and so, what are what is your company going to do that's going to make it less accessible? You know, a, a fence is not going to do it. You sure. know, at least not a wire fence, because I've climbed those all my life. Well, sure. Not lately, but. <laughs> <laughs> the the same concern was expressed by planning commission you know both times we were in front of the planning commission and it was you know the high school is a good point and those schools a good point it was more about the apartments that are that yeah. are right there you know mm -hmm. in very close proximity to the east side of our site um, so you know one of the things besides the fence that we're going to provide is is kind of a you know a hedgerow around the fence so the idea is to to not let people even get to the fence. You know, we know a fence can easily be scaled if somebody is, is inclined to do so. So, you know, we're gonna try and bolster the fence, if you will, by just adding additional landscaping, you know, around that fence to try and just keep people out as much as possible. Um, you know, aside from that, we do have in-house property management. You know, we are in constant communication with our tenants. A lot of these tenants, uh, you know, have, have security outside of their building, so they should be able to notify us if we see anybody that's, you know, scaling the fence trying to get into these ponds, and, and we will deal with it. If we start to see a problem, we will deal with it, you know, as needed, whether it's you know, hiring security that needs to be there, you know, 24 hours a day or, um, or what have you, or we, you know, maybe we'll come up with additional measures at that time, but, you know, from, from day one, we're gonna install the fence, we're gonna install the landscaping, um, and hope that that's enough to deter folks. But if not, then, you know, with us maintaining and owning these buildings long term, we'll be able to address the problem if it arises in the future. Is, is the fencing that's planned uh, going to be like a cast iron type of, you know, slatted fence? Yeah, that's what we're proposing now. It'll either be a, a steel or an aluminum, um, you know, kind of like a wrought iron look, you know, black uh, powder coated, uh, okay. you know, five to six feet tall. 
And may I just put in the recommendation that that hedgerow be done with something very thorny? Sure. Like roses. Roses, or, you know, roses would be nice. <laughs> and also, it, they have a retention pond around the high school already, and it has not proven to be a problem. But it's not. It's wide. not as bull. It's not as as, as as much as theirs will be, but it is a retention pond around the the high school right now. Um, and uh, the last question I had came from residents, and that is, um, and you may have been here at the time, there was a gentleman who was very concerned about the smell of diesel uh, and had recommended that um, you look into whether there was some, uh, it, the system that's being used in some places, you may be familiar with this already, where the um, diesel exhaust can be filtered through, you know, a, a something that would remove that smell from the air, or you know, filter it. Have you had an opportunity to look into anything like that? I don't know that I was here at the meeting that, that came up, um, and I'm not familiar with that product or that um, system. Um, but we could, we'd be happy to look into it. Yeah, I, I don't think I was here when that specific came up. I think we talked a lot about, uh, you know, diesel fumes in general and. You know, one thing I will say, uh, a lot of these companies that are they're leasing these buildings are, you know, thinking about their environmental impact. And, and a lot of these, you know, trucks that may be running trailers around the yard, you know, a lot of times you have trailers backed into a space and then when they're needed to dock, a, a truck that's not a typical over the road truck will move them from the trailer space and back them into a dock so they can be loaded. Uh, a lot of those are going more green. You know, I think in the future you're going to see more electric trucks that are just running around the yard, not for long haul over the road, but uh, um, I think as you, you start to see, you know, these companies invest more in their, you know, in the green movement, you're going to see less and less, you know, idling trucks on these sites. So, um, you know, I'd be happy to look into something that, that removes that, but uh, to be honest, I'm not familiar with, with okay. anything such as that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Councilwoman Williams. Uh, yes, I had two questions for you. Um, one also concerned the diesel um, question. Um, in case there is an oil spill or diesel spill or something like that, I think at the other meeting you said that the tenants would be held um, be, be held um, um, to clean it up or whatever. I was wondering whether you guys had thought about a plan or a contract or something related to that because that can happen. Yeah, you know, we we own about 100 million square feet across the country and we don't generally have that happen. I, I can't think of an instance that that's happened in one of our parks. Uh, you know, I will say in this park that the water or the diesel would go into a storm sewer system which would take it into a retention basin and that would be the point at which we would be able to clean it up. You know, if a, if a diesel spill occurs, it would take a little bit of time before it would reach the outlet to that retention basin. So it would give us time to get, you know, an emergency response out there. Uh, but yeah, the tenants would be responsible for any, any type of spill that occurs on the site. Um, you know, we, we will work with our tenants to make sure that they have proper, you know, equipment on site. I don't think you generally have, have spills like that unless you have a, a fleet that, uh, you know, some fleets that maybe are doing local deliveries will have a, a mobile service come in and fill their trucks at night. That way they're fueled and ready to go first thing in the morning. Um, if it's just, you know, trucks that aren't, you know, local delivery like that, if they're trucks that are coming in, you know, getting their load and, and moving out, you generally won't have spills like that just because of the nature of the business. It's, you know, it's no different than, uh, you know, a truck traveling on the interstate. You don't generally have fuel spills unless there's an accident. Um, so if there is a tenant that uh, does, you know, fleet fueling, if you will, we'll make sure that they have, you know, equipment in place on site that can deal with any spills that may happen while they're fueling those vehicles. Okay, and my uh, other question to you is I'm looking at the uh, site plans and, you, and there's that road that comes behind Home Depot that leads out into Kelly Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering what I know they're going to do the traffic study, but I was wondering what was the plans for that particular little area? Because when it comes out on Kelly, there's um, Chandler Park 
Academy right there. And, you know, the kids are always crossing the street right there, and then we got some traffic right there. And I was just wondering what that little road was, what, what you guys had planned for that. Yeah, so the, the road itself is actually going to stay uh, more or less the same that it is now. We're actually going to narrow it up a little bit because we want some some room. If you look at it now, it's all pavement, and then there's a little concrete curb before you get to the Home Depot loading area behind Home Depot. We want a little bit of grass and landscaping in that area, so we're actually going to narrow that road up by one lane. Uh, I also think it, it's kind of a speed hazard right now. People are kind of driving fast through there, and because it's really wide, and you don't, you know, you aren't forced to slow down. So by narrowing it up by one lane, it you know, provides room for some signage, provides room for landscaping. Hopefully, it slows traffic down. Um, we don't anticipate trucks using that access. We think you know employees may use that, you know, especially if they're trying to head. I guess that would be southbound on Kelly. Um, you know, to get home for the day. Uh, trucks, we're gonna have internal signage that directs trucks all back out to Vernier, you know, and, and then eastbound in 94. Okay, all right, thank you. <clears throat> um, what about the electric? Uh, will you all have electric stations for cars and trucks? Yeah, we're starting to put those in, um, you know, in a lot of our our spec buildings um, if we don't put them in from day one we're going to put the wiring to actually put them in the future so that's what we've been doing on a lot of spec buildings is we've been setting them up to have you know a half dozen to a dozen electric car parking spaces for employees and then when a tenant wants them we're able to put them in you know, pretty easily um, so we you know we're, we're starting to uh, look at green alternatives for our buildings to make sure that they're you know, we're we're being conscientious of the future, so, and that's one of the, you know, the directions that we think the world's heading is towards electric vehicles. So, all right, thank you. That. Are there any further discussions? <laughs> yes. A little off the be here now. We're starting to talk with some of you uh, about it. Um, probably should have it offline, but some of those. I, I look at one of our websites we have out there about Harper Woods, present and past, that. Everybody's always questioning oh, what's going to happen with the, the line. We've already discussed, we, we have that. No. Tim, we already have that all up in line. We also have um, where we are getting the benches and things to repurpose, to use where the um, basketball courts are. We've already been through that with the garbage cans and whatever way. Actually, Tim has given us anything that we at the city of Harper Woods would like to repurpose. We have access to it, and this is what we're going to do. All this discussion is something that we had when we were yeah, negotiating this with. Okay, we've had a lot of discussion on that. I, I, that's why I answered the person on, on the Facebook page, please give us an opportunity <coughs> we have put everything out on the table, especially the mouse and the lion and the hippo. It is not going anywhere. That is Harper Woods property. They have given it to us. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, we did not neglect our city when we were doing negotiations with North Point. They were very accommodating and they didn't even realize the value or how much we wanted it until we brought it up, and it was a no, no problem. I didn't hear you. No, I'm saying you I said great. I said all that. Yeah, so everyone can rest assured <laughs> that we have done the best we can do for Harper Woods with anything that we can repurpose out of Eastland for Harper Woods, we have, we're privileged to it. And that means the mouse and the lion and the hippo, it's not going anywhere but somewhere in the city of Harper Woods. Okay. All right, no thank North Point for being so generous to us because they didn't have to. Oh, they've been great. All right. So is there any other questions of North Point right now? Okay, seeing none. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of this motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries.
Okay, uh, brings us to item G2, progress payment number two, 2021 concrete pavement repair uh, number 180-260. Mayor and Council attaches a letter from our city engineers transmitting progress payment number two on the 2021 concrete pavement repair project number 180-260 it is recommended that this payment be approved. No. Mayor, a resolution is required. I, I, Councilman Toussaint. Uh, recommended action by resolution to approve payment to L. Anthony Construction Inc. in the amount of 23,067 dollars for progress payment number two on the 2021 concrete payment repair project number 18-26. Support. 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 Any discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes. Quick question, um, City Manager. I, from what I'm reading in these documents, it looks as if this is the balance um, <coughs> that's due, but are they still working on this project? In other words, will we be continuing to get additional billings? I have Mr. Schneider here from DPW. Bill, would you care to say a few words? Usually there's yeah. some retention. Yeah, thank you. There is retainage on this uh, project, you know, you take about 5%, 10% of the project is out of the main to make sure that all the conditions of the original contract were fulfilled. Uh, this is somewhat of a moving target in that when we put these estimates together in anticipation of the miscellaneous concrete program, we actually quantify that and assign value to it. But we've also discussed how that is a moving target in that if we have another water main break where we have to approach or a street section, then that will be included in this. And uh, to that end, actually, we've had a section of concrete come out on the east side of 94 by Hawthorne that we'd like to try and get replaced you know, this year. So there will be an uptick in this. But uh, to answer your question, yes, there's some remaining. Okay, so it's not a closed, it's not closed out. It's, Correct. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Mm -hmm. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Council, or Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. And Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Okay. Resolution passes. Okay, item G3, transfer to 2021 winter tax roll delinquent city services, special pickups and meter replacements. Mayor and Council, attached is a request for authorization from the Finance Director Treasurer to transfer to the tax rolls delinquent bills not paid by the property owners. We do this annually and their delinquent bills then become a tax lien on the property. It is recommended that these transfers be approved. Mayor, a resolution is required. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilwoman Constantino. I'll offer the resolution to approve the transfer of $51,050.84 from Miscellaneous City Services, $24,955 for special pickups, and $2,267 for meter replacements for a total of $78,272.84 to the 2021 winter tax roll as proposed and submitted by the acting treasurer. Support, support by Mrs. Sawick, Councilwoman Sawicki. Discussion. Madam Mayor? Yes. I'm just curious about it. Uh, what length of time or amount of money determines when this moves on to the county? Uh, we look at the delinquencies and, and the dollar values. Uh, generally, uh, any water bills, uh, and, and again, we couldn't transfer water bills last year because of COVID, uh, but, but generally anything that exceeds, you know, a few hundred dollars uh, that's been delinquent for, uh, I want to say, mo more than 90 days. But, Kim, we have our uh, deputy treasurer here, acting treasurer, and um, she'll kind of explain in a little more detail.
Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Yeah, I, I just had a question about what was meter replacements. I understand the other two, but what's what is meter replacement? What's that? Uh, if people if people owe for meters, let, let's lots of times what will happen is when a bill is high, you may have a resident um, stating that there was a, a bad meter. And uh, what our policy is, is we will take that meter out, we will have that meter tested. If the meter comes back bad or in error, uh, the city will pay the cost of the replacement. Uh, I, I wanna say the testing and so forth. But if the meter comes back and it's in good working order, then that responsibility goes to the homeowner. And uh, lots of times homeowners do not want to pay um, those invoices. Uh, it's, it's just an excuse to argue for the most part, you know, over a high water bill. But in, in the area of a water meter, if a water meter is bad, it never speeds up. It always slows down. It's always in favor of the residents. So that's, that's, what, come, that's what that bill is. Okay. okay. Okay, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Resolution passes. Okay, item G4. Uh, collective bargaining agreement, technical, professional, and office workers association of Michigan, uh, DPW unit. And, and before I start, Mayor and Council, I, I do want to say that uh, there was an error on one of the pages in the packet that was given to you, and I have the handout here. Um, let's see, I'll pass this down. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor and Council, attached is a tentative agreement between the city and the TPOM DPW unit. Essentially, the agreement remains the same as the current one that expires December 31st, 2021. The successor agreement is for three years as opposed to two years for the prior agreement and modest increases have been made in the following area. One, standby pay for holidays, increased to $100 from $50. Two, Juneteenth holiday was added. Three, the uniform clothing allowance increased to $300 from 250. Signing bonus, $1,000 one time only. Five, wages, 2% effective 1-1-2022 one one two thousand twenty three and one one two thousand twenty four number six upon completion of five years of service one percent of base salary raise and upon completion of 25 years two percent of base salary increase it is recommended that this tentative agreement be approved mayor a resolution is needed madam mayor Yes, Councilwoman Pies. I will offer by resolution to approve the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Harper Woods and the Technical, Professional, and Office Workers Association of Michigan, TPOAM, DPW, DPW <laughs> unit, covering the period January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2024, and further to authorize the mayor and the city manager to sign the agreement. I'll support. Support. I support. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Sorry. All right. Any discussion? Um, Madam Mayor? Yes. I just have a question about um, the signing bonus. Mm -hmm. That goes to all of the employees. Also, I'm, I'm wondering why it's called a signing uh, it's 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 the way it's bargained, mm -hmm. and uh, upon ratification of the contract, 
Uh, the individual members, I believe there's six people involved, they'll get a, a thousand dollar signing bonus. Okay. Thank you. Any sure. further discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilwoman Williams. Yeah, I just had two. Uh, one, of my, one of my questions was about the signing bonus, because I was wondering that too, because since it says signing bonus, I would think that it was someone new who's signing on, right. but then I saw that there were several employees who was already here mm -hmm. who was getting the signing bonus. So is it the wording of the sign, signing bonus? That's, that's just a, a, a naming convention. It's very common in mm -hmm. labor agreements. Right. Um, like I said, just to uh, give a little bit of money up front. Uh, they ratified the contract uh, six zero, and, and this was part of what was bargained. Okay. Then my other question was on on the holidays. I was just curious about one. The um, employee's birthday is a holiday. That's correct. So that's interesting. <laughs> it's been that everywhere. I wish I did that off too. You know. Okay. Yes, Councilwoman Swicky. Um, yes, just one quick question. I didn't <coughs> notice uh, anything in here that would indicate that um, that employees needed to be vaccinated. And I know this is something that, that the state and the various other local governments have been doing. Uh, I thought perhaps the signing bonus might have something to do with that. But do you know um, what our vaccination status is for our employees? They're, they're already vaccinated in okay. DPW. So mm -hmm. all of them are yes. Vaccinated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of uh, for new employees? Is there any kind of requirement? Uh, well, it all depends, you know, on on where they work. Um, but again, uh, you know, that's a that's a very very personal topic, and and again, it doesn't come up in collective bargaining agreements. Right. Well, the reason that I bring it up at this point is that I know a number of, as I mentioned, you know, state and um, and other communities uh, do make that part of the contract, um, partly because it affects health care, you know, and that if an employee is out or if they infect other people on the job, you know, it could have an impact on the community. So that's the reason I asked about Well, our, our police officers, firefighters, those, you know, that are, are working in those jobs too, they're, they're vaccinated. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes. I know this probably looks like a little bit to everyone out there, but in the, in the, in the long run, DPW does a hell of a job for us. They really do. With leave, pick up, and with six guys running this whole city, I mean, Gross Point Woods has got 27. I think they're about the same mm -hmm. size. So kudos to Bill, John, and everybody there. So I'm all for this. Thank you. Is there any other further discussion? Okay. I'm still going to do the signing bonus. So with that police, we, we want to get them to come. We offer a signing bonus because they're new. No, no. The, no. the signing bonus is when there's a new contract right. in place. If they sign a contract. Right. It keeps them from trying to That's a part of uh, most union negotiations. I get it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Okay. Resolution passes. Okay, item G5, wage adjustment, exempt and administrative employees, mayor and council, due to the expiration of the TPOAM clerical unit as of December 31st, 2021, I am proposing the wage adjustments given to the TPOAM DPW unit employees are also given to those previously covered by the TPOAM clerical union and those exempt employees that formerly followed the TPOAM clerical unit contract. I have also added our DPW superintendent and director of parks and recreation. It is recommended that these adjustments be approved. Mayor, a resolution is required. Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilwoman. I'll offer by resolution to approve the wage adjustments in accordance with the TPOM 
DPW unit collective bargaining agreement for all exempt slash administrative employees. Board. Discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes, Council Members. Um, I'm curious, uh, will these employees now be covered by the TPOAM contract in the future, or are they just going to remain without? You know, since their their unit has essentially closed, um, will they be you know grandfathered into the current TPOAM unit with, of DPW, or will they be kind of without? Okay, currently, currently, what's happening is is the clerical unit TPOAM is going to be expiring December thirty first, two thousand twenty one. These employees were formerly bargained with that union. Now they will be uh, exempt employees. We probably are going to at some point get um, uh, individual uh, employment contracts for them. Uh, but at this point, we're just going to have them follow the DPW unit um, because all the benefits, all the holidays, all the conditions of employment are essentially the same. But they won't actually be part of that union. That's correct. They won't be paying wages. I mean, uh, dues, right? Correct. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilwoman. Um, I am concerned about at some point a wage correction. Like, for example, we have some higher paid employees that if they're making $100,000 a year and they receive a 2% wage increase, that's an additional $2,000. But the, some of the, someone who's only making forty five thousand dollars a year would only receive eight hundred dollars increase, and so the people who are making a lot now are making much more and more and more. It, it compounds where the people who don't make that much money, the people who need it the most, they're not getting the same level of increase as some of the other uh, people. And with today's um, economy and and inflation the way it is, it's really hard on some of our lower paid employees. At some point, uh, perhaps you know, in the future, I would like to see a wage correction to try to um, close the gap because the gap is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'd like to, I'd like to see our lower-paid employees making a little bit more, or somehow just, you know, rather instead of doing a straight two percent at some point, maybe do an amount where they could. Bring, we could bring up the lower paid employees at some point or anybody like that makes under 50,000 or 60,000 or something uh, because those are the people that concern, that concern me the most that are they really making a living wage in today's times? I, I would say that uh, last contract we, uh, we adjusted for that. Uh, I want to say this contract we're kind of just carrying forward uh, you know, on the original scheme that we have, and as market conditions, competitive conditions uh, present themselves with other employers, we, we will adjust that. We will adjust that. that. That's so noted. Okay, thank you. All right, is there any further discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilwoman Pies. Just for clarification's sake. None of the people listed here is making $100,000 or I, I, close I, to it. I didn't want the audience I, I, to, I didn't right. want the audience. I was giving yeah, simple oh, numbers. No. Yeah. We do yeah. have people who yeah. make over $100,000 who are also receiving the same uh, percentage increase. But I, I we agree. have librarians with master's degrees, you know, making in their $30,000 some range and it, to me, they really to, are worth a lot more than that to me. Right. And then we have people in the DPW that maybe are not making that much money either. And then in the meantime, we have people in other departments or department heads that are just making a lot of money. And, and you know, our, it's almost like our middle class is evaporating because we're getting, the higher class is getting more and more money because of their going by percentage in the, in the um, you know, the blue collar workers are, are kind of stuck. You I, know, I understand that, that, that the number you gave was just for an yeah, easy so number. Everybody else right. to look at. But I just, I, mean, I wanted. People who make that much that work here, so. But uh, the people no. that are covered by this do not no. make that much. And that's well, that's what I wanted true. to clarify with the audience it's is kind that. Of a, 
No one in that group makes that kind of money. No one in that group makes that kind of money. So, okay. But I, there are people in this group who make not very much money. And those are the people I'm trying to help. Well, you know, and that is something that we, could, we will revisit when we have more taxable dollars and stuff. Uh, we get the Eastland project going on. We can, we can, those are things that we can look forward to is to make uh, more accommodations for our employees. They've done a yeoman's job and they need to be rewarded. So, but as is time now, we are first time in the black in a very long time and we want to stay in the black. And we will eventually be able to bring people back up to the standard that we think that they should be at. Is there, is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. <clears throat> Councilman Toussaint. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Okay. Resolution passes. Okay. Um, item G6. Redesign and remodel of finance treasurer office. Uh, mayor and council attaches a memorandum from the acting treasurer regarding the proposed remodeling of the finance treasurer's area in city hall. It is our intent to create a more collaborative workspace for myself and my staff. I have included a diagram of the new layout and the bid that has been submitted. As her memo states, we sent out bid specifications to four different companies and only received one. They are local and a reputable company that has been in business for 20 years. I have reviewed this with her and it is recommended that the bid be accepted. And I do want to add one further comment that the money for this particular project is coming from excess funds in the capital improvement <coughs> fund, which has to be spent this year. Otherwise we'll have to use it to buy down uh, interest or principal. So, Mayor, um, a resolution is required. Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilwoman Sawicki. I will offer the resolution to accept the bid submitted by Creative Office Interior in the amount of $23,366.29 for the redesign and remodel of the finance treasurer's area, and further that due to only receiving one bid, that competitive Okay, support. Any discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilwoman Pies. I'm, uh, I'm wondering why we, why we didn't just put it out there that we were accepting bids instead of just sending it to specific companies. It says it, that we sent the bids to four companies asking them to bid. I'm wondering why we just don't put out a notice and have multiple companies bid. Well, we did. We, we had companies originally that were interested, uh, but when they came in and they took a look at what they had to work with in terms of, uh, I want to say, design, uh, cabling on the floors, uh, electrical outlets, heaters, the fact that uh, there's going to be windows uh, being put in City Hall next year, uh, that became sort of um, cumbersome uh, for a lot of them. So, uh, you know, two came in uh, and um, we never heard back from one and the one that came in has been doing work for the City of Harper Woods for a while. And uh, again, the, la the uh, ladies <laughs> in the office worked uh, with them extensively here. So uh, Kim, Mickey, Maria, would you want to get up and talk a little bit about this? Okay. I mean, they, they took it, uh, you know, to uh, with all the specifics. And again, they were very pleased with uh, the bids and, and the type of work that was being proposed. <laughs> um, the, the woman that we're working with uh, it has been um, extremely helpful and very knowledgeable and with the space that we do have it's, it's very limited and it's um, she's really the only one that can show any interest at all to, to help us with this specific area. Mm -hmm. 
fight doesn't really seem that bad. No, it's been furniture, it's carpet, it's moving walls. My understanding is it also will allow you to work more efficiently. Exactly. Yes. So you us in that office space, and then we'll all be able to work right together, um, very closely together. Okay. And right now you're separated by walls. By walls and yeah. windows and such. It's been difficult for me because um, actually I'm in floor. I have no vision of floor unless I hear somebody or and then I come out right away if there's an issue. Um, I'm only tenants who live there. And I also would like to add something too that uh, there's a, a knowledge transfer that's going on too. There's there's uh, some jobs that are going to take uh, approximately at a minimum three years uh, to learn, and you have to have people in a close uh, I, I want to say proximity. Uh, because lots of things work off of timing, scheduling, and, uh, and like I said, people cross-training, learning each other's jobs, each other's discipline, and this whole entire office and this whole entire office environment is going to contribute to that immensely. So that's, that's one of the main reasons why we want to do this. Yeah, 15 years. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilwoman Williams. Okay, the Acting City Manager mentioned uh, excess capital improvement funds and that that's where this would be coming from. Yes. So yes. I was wondering, um, after this expenditure, are there still funds in the capital improvement funds and do we still have to spend it on something specific because this is November? Yeah, this, this is going to uh, pretty much deplete it. You know, Hopefully it's, not. It's, it's, uh, I think we have maybe about uh, close to maybe $24,000 okay. in there. So this will pretty much uh, take the whole fund down. And also we will be looking into uh, doing some improvement in the police and fire department area and this front hallway. Uh, the city clerk and I was uh, doing a, a survey and it's just a little bit of upkeep <coughs> that needs to be done out there to make it more attractive to citizens when they come into the building. So there are a few things that we would like to see done and we will bring that forward because I got a, uh, a wish list <laughs> from, the, uh, from the police department, police and fire department. So uh, these are things that we need to work on because some things that are uh, needed to be done are health hazards and we need to correct those. And the other parts of it is we ask for fire and I mean we ask for police officers to come into and they look back there at the dingy area that they are going to be spending, you know, 50% or better of their waking hours and it is just not attractive. So. Those are things that we need to work on to make ourselves more uh, compatible for people to want to be a part of our working force, workforce. Madam Mayor? Yes. Since you're on that topic, and it is kind of, a, it fits here, um, I know that when we had the flood take place uh, in the lower level of this building, um, there was a lot of press uh, that also um, heard about you know, the problems that were going on. Has that been rectified? Is the lower level of this building more livable, so to speak, for yes. our employees? Yes, and, and, and I want to say that th there are some things that are, are going to happen in, in 2022. We're not there yet, but we know what the problems are. We have received um, funds from ARPA, uh, but at the same time, the permitted uses of those funds um, they're, they're still working them out. I, and what I mean by that is there are some projects where we may be getting 
uh, additional monies and coordinating funds with Wayne County. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going through those projects one at a time, but like the mayor has said, uh, very much looking into the locker areas uh, in the police and fire department. Uh, it's going to be uh, designed for the future. You know, we're going to have uh, female police officers. We're going to have female firefighters. So we have to have uh, separate accommodations and, and clean accommodations at that. Right. So we're, uh, we're working on that. That's going to be a big project. But, um, you know, we have that scheduled for 2022. And the basements. And the basements, and the basements yeah. please. <laughs> All right, is there any further discussion? Yes. I am good at the, the police and fire department do a fantastic job for the city. And believe me, I support anybody's there and through their accommodations that we can come up with. <laughs> Thank they you. Mm -hmm. All right. Roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Resolution passes. All right. Okay, I uh, would like to add an additional item uh, under new business, item uh, G7. And, uh, Mayor, I would need a motion to add it to the agenda. Madam, Madam Mayor. Mayor. Yes, uh, Councilwoman Swicky. I'll offer the motion to add to the agenda the cross-connection control program contract renewal. Supported by you, Mrs. Support. Okay. All right. Um, discussion. Discussion? Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes. I had a long conversation with Bill on this also, and um, I know we're just going to waive uh, the bid process because this company is the only one really around, but they have all of our records. And mm. to transfer that over to a new company would be, they'd learn our whole city all over again, and that's, it's, it's well not worth it at all. I know Harper Woods has it, Gross Point Woods has it, the park uses the same company, so it's very reputable. All right. Are there any further discussions? Okay, we'll, okay, we'll call, uh, support. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so all in favor. I th keep thinking I'm on a resolution. Okay, okay. Well, we need a resolution. Hi. Yeah. Well, it's a motion to okay. add this. Yes. Okay, so all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, motion carries. Now. Okay, now I'll go. Mayor and Council, I would like uh, to ask you to add the following item to tonight's agenda. The attached correspondence from DPW superintendent was just received notifying us that our current contract with HydroCorp will be expiring soon. This company provides inspections of backflow present preventative devices for businesses and residents. I have reviewed this and it is recommended that we renew this contract for three years. Mayor, a resolution is required. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman Pies. I'll offer by resolution to approve the contract renewal dated November 11th, 2021 from HydroCorp for their professional inspection services of backflow preventative devices for three years in the amount of $19,224, payable monthly $534 for the 36 month period. Support. All right. Any discussion? Madam Mayor. Yes. Yes, I was just wondering, what was the previous contract? Was it also a three-year contract in about the same amount, or is this uh, a different? Actually, uh, what has taken place here is that we were able to lock in the current prices under the old contract without negotiating uh, prices with a new contract. Uh, fuel costs are up, labor costs are up, and as Council Member Jenny noted, that they would have to learn the city all over again if we had another contract. So it was uh, a good bet to get this negotiated now and um, in front of you tonight. Any further discussion? Is this three years here? Okay, roll call vote, Mrs. Franks. Mayor Kendall. Yes. 
Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman Pies. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Okay, resolution passes. The mayor, that concludes the city manager's reports. All right. This brings us to the call to audience. One time only, please come up and Mr. Hakeem, is that you? Larry Hakeem, resident of Little Stone Road. I have just two brief things. Uh, has there been any uh, research, investigation, phone call, follow up to my uh, questions regarding uh, FEMA and getting whatever we need approved by FEMA so we, the residents of Harper Woods, are allowed to be offered flood insurance by the insurance companies of America. I haven't heard anything back since I brought it up. I uh, don't know if anybody's doing anything or just went to sleep, but um, that's question number one. So if you got an answer, I'd love it. If not, I'd like to know if it's something you need me to do or can the city handle it? I brought that up over three meetings ago. So. Mm -hmm. We're still, uh, still talking with FEMA. Talking with them about? Ta talking with them about a host of things. Uh, they're still communicating with us and they're communicating with residents and they're communicating with the county and that's where it's at right now. It's about the Are we talking insurance. about the same thing? Yeah, yeah. anything FEMA related. Okay, well this was specific to whatever requirements they had for the city uh -huh. For the flood insurance. Just to get an approval yeah. for our insurance companies to offer us insurance. I'm not worried about a check or looking for help from mm -hmm. FEMA for nothing. I just want them to looking for us to see if we're doing anything about meeting their necessary requirements because at the mm -hmm. meeting I brought it up and nobody even heard of it. And I wonder if you at least heard of it or if they clarified what it is we need to get done. Right. That's my question. I heard it. <laughs> okay. okay. So okay. we're way passing on yeah. an answer. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Next thing uh, is very trivial to anybody that's not a dog owner that doesn't use Salter Park, but I am a dog owner and I use Salter Park and I am making an offer to the city to spend the first thousand dollars out of my pocket to purchase the necessary bags to pick up the dog waste at Salter Park if we could get the city to put up the little stanchion that the bags go in. Every park that allows dogs at the entrance has a little thing where you can grab a doggy bag and walk your dog in peace and don't have to hear 55 people uh, uh, yelling at you for not picking up your dog feces, which responsible dog owners do anyway. But, um, you know, budget, budget, budget. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to build one or buy one or do whatever, but get the thing up, go to one of these other parks that has them, see what they are, order them, buy them, put them up, and I'll spend the first thousand dollars to buy the next thousand dollars worth of bags to fill the damn thing if we have to. Okay? I mean, it's All uh, right. People Thank over you. there that either the bag fell out of their pocket on the way over there, or they, for whatever reason they don't do it, but you know, we spent the money and the time and the effort to put signs up that got 87 different rules and regulations to walk your dog. So we could have something up there that holds doggy bags. That's it. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Hello, LaShare Montgomery, Kenosha Street. I just have a question. My former resident, when I lived over on Williamsburg, I have a question about parking permits. I know the parking permits were for the residents to park 
on the street, but now I'm on a, another residential street on Kenosha, does that still apply for parking on the actual street for the residents that have parking permits on the windshields of their cars? Yeah, okay. it's for that actual street. Am I not correct? Okay, because uh, there's several cars parked in front of my house that don't have the would you just let the chief know? Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Is it? Yes. Mr. Rochelle, I've been a resident of Parkwood for 40 something years. And I would like to say that it's a great place to live. But we're getting a little lax on our ordinance. This young lady was just talking about parking permits. Well, I live on Washtenaw Street, and there are some people that have been parking on Washtenaw Street, and it's between 2.30 and 5 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, if you're supposed to have a car if you don't have a parking permit. There's plenty of people parking with no parking permits. This kind of peed me off the other day because we have leaf pick up. Okay. So I went out there and I'm not a spring chicken. I'm 70 something years old and I, I do what I, I need to do. So I break my leaves in front of the house in the cur on the curb and just say somebody comes along, parks their car there. I don't know if they're visiting or whatever. The way. They had no parking permit. I've seen the car before. The guy comes down with the vacuum pick up the leaves, guess what? It's parked there. So now, I had two weeks leaves. Here the other day, I had to approach a guy. He was gonna park there. I had two weeks of leaves. I says, could you please park in another spot? I says, they're gonna come down with the vacuum cleaner. He gave me a hard time. I said, I was gonna call the police. But he finally got in his car and took off. So it's just a matter of the city's always complaining about they have no revenue, okay? Why aren't you ticketing these people that are not have parking permits? And this has been going on for years, for, for two or three years now. I mean, not only that, how about you look at that book that you sent out, that magazine or whatever for fall, spring. You know, I have to laugh. Because half of those ordinances are not enforced, especially the ordinances about putting your garbage cans in the street. You're not supposed to put your garbage cans in the street. You go down Washington Street on Sandalac and Dupree and count how many people's got their garbage cans in the street. Okay? That's another problem. Mm -hmm. The wind, we had a windstorm here the other day. Do you know how many people had their garbage cans in the middle of the street? And it was on, what, what day was that we had the, and our garbage pickups on Monday. They don't put their garbage, it, you got 24 hours, right? Or whatever it is, 12 hours after that, to take your garbage can and put it in the back of your house. Do you know how many people don't do that? It sets there, it sets there for three days or four days until a neighbor does it for them. I've done it for, for people. Here the other day, uh, when the windstorm, we had two or three garbage cans in the middle of the street. People were swerving that were driving down the street to miss the garbage cans. You shouldn't have to do that. So I'd like to know, what's the or what good is the ordinance? What good is the book if people aren't going to? Bottom line, I mean, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Right. And another thing cutting grass this year. Got people cut grass maybe three or four times. Don't watch that. No, it doesn't seem like anybody's, you know, I used to see cars going down the street. I used to put tags on them. On the, I haven't seen that in I don't know how long. So I mean, what good does it have ordinances if you're not gonna enforce them? Right. I, mean, I agree. And that, and, and basically, how can you complain about revenue when you've got the revenue, the chance for revenue there? And I'm not saying, you know, but it is, it's a fact. 
<coughs> you've got a chance for revenue. So that's what I, I, I just had to, had to kind of blow off steam because I'm getting a little tired of having to do neighbors' people, uh, stuff, like picking up their garbage cans in the middle of the street. Because I don't want anybody to lose control of their, their car and go up in my, in my lawn or whatever. Excuse me. And that's me? another thing, speeding as we're talking. It's getting to be ridiculous. Okay. The speeding going down streets. We've got kids that play in the area. And these people are doing 90 miles an hour down the street. Now, I know in, in uh, my dad's neighborhood, he lives in uh, Detroit on Telegraph and Six Mile Road. They're putting speed bumps. Yes. But my question is with these speed bumps that they're putting in, they're not the asphalt speed bumps. They're putting in these rubber speed bumps. How are they anchoring those to the ground? Now, when we have, in Hartford Woods, we're fortunate to have people that come down when it snows and they plow and we have the plows. Is that going to pull those up? No. And is there a bar or is there, is there uh, like um, bolts or something that holds those into the ground? That's another problem. Because okay. I know we were, they were talking about speed bumps in Harper Woods, weren't they? Yes. Uh, so you have to take that in consideration if you're going to put speed bumps because you don't want residents going down the street getting flat tires from after the guy and, come and pull the speed bumps up. So okay. I'm just, you know, saying. All right. So, I mean. Thank it, you very much. Yeah, I mean, it's getting to be on Washington Street between Dupree and Santa. Like, I can't swear about any other street or whatever it is, but I know in my area, these are the things that are happening. And uh, oh, well, I'm still talking, and I'll be finished in a minute. Garbage cans with no lids. We got you. We understand. Yeah. It's only rats. three. Rats. I've seen rats jumping out of garbage cans. Yes. People no lids. So. Those are all things that we will be addressing. Good. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anyone else, Mr. Kadat? Excuse me, a quick uh, comments here. Um, uh, I talked to uh, DT Energy about the transitional recovery mechanism, and uh, they say they are acting under the authority of the Michigan Public Service Commission. And so this fee is being uh, uh, um, put on all DTE Energy customers' bills. And basically what it is is um, it's a bailout of the Detroit Public Lighting Commission. So in my opinion, it's a bailout of one unit of government by another unit, uh, by citizens of another unit of government. And so um, I think this is um, pretty unfair. And, uh, and they've done this in the past, so it seems to, uh, what seems to happen is they run out of money, then they, they request more money from the uh, DT Energy requests more money to complete the transfer of the Detroit Public Lighting Facilities to DT Energy's control. And so then the Michigan Public Service Commission gives them permission to do this. Mm. And so my opinion of the Michigan Public Service Commission is less than favorable. And so I think uh, we, that money should stay in Harper Woods. So right. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm really kind of upset about that, but I guess we could all complain to the Michigan Public Service Commission or our legislature about uh, Get a this, un, this is kind of unfair. Uh, so one unit of government uh, through the years mismanaged things and then uh, we have to pay to bail them out. And so I don't think that's, I don't think that's proper. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing is um, lead service lines. This has been in the news quite a bit lately. Uh, Benton Harbor Flint and um, also St. Clair Shores. Um, so what we need, I think, to do is to identify all lead service lines in Harper Woods, uh, if they haven't already been identified, and replace all lead service lines as soon as possible. So any um, 
any level of lead is really unacceptable. So um, just because a few homes um, tested above uh, guide, uh, lead level guidelines, uh, I think there's a lot um, more homes that have lead problems, uh, maybe not to the um, degree where government action is required or something like 15 parts per uh, million or billion. And um, so I think we need to identify uh, and replace those ASAP. Uh, passing out water filters is um, questionable at best. I don't know how effective those, I don't think those things are that effective, but uh, I'm not an expert on that. So um, I would uh, try to see some kind of program and maybe we can get federal or state uh, funds to uh, expedite this, but trying to do, but replacing lead service lines over a five year, 10 year, 20 year period, I think is not acceptable. And so, um, so we need to do it as ASAP, I guess. Um, and the other thing is, I have a question about, um, can the city install black, black backflow preventers in our, for local residential uh, units or even commercial units um, at, at, a, at a cost to the residents or at a cost to the city? so that if a flood occurs in the future, we would not get uh, water backed up into our uh, basements and, uh, or for, for that matter, the, the public uh, uh, buildings. So um, I understand that a back, uh, backflow preventer devices can be installed in sewer lines to prevent this from happening in the future, but what the cost would be or how involved it would be, I have no idea. So uh, I would like to uh, get an answer to if that could be done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did you have any response to any of that? No, we'll look after we take a Yeah, because we we. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to speak from the audience? Yeah, I just wonder if there's any uh, programs for recyclables, plastic glass, <coughs> can. I've been here, it's been a while since I've been here, but I've been taking my stuff to St. Clair Shores to my brother's house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if there's anything in the future, if they got something set up at DPW yard. No. Or just no flat out, no program. Okay. Yes. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to speak? Yeah. All right, seeing none. Go to audience and start with you, Councilwoman Constantino. Yes, um, I've been listening to some of the residents and their concerns. Uh, so there's a few things I have to say. Um, perhaps we should come up <coughs> with an energy and technology plan for the future with the things that the technology that exists today we don't need to be spending all the tax dollars that we're spending on public lighting when we could be converting over to solar and we had converted to led thinking it would be cheaper but then dte tried to raise the prices on that to make it even more expensive we of course you know let them know that was not acceptable but it's still not saving our taxpayers the money that we need to save that we could be using on other things like more police officers and such so i i think we need to come up with a, a plan for energy and technology uh, the state right now is using street lights that are solar power and if you have something like that you really aren't giving money to DTE like that. So uh, that's something I think we need to think about and, and this needs to be in a five year plan, something that for long term we can, can use. I mean, even just running some of our buildings and things, we could use either solar or some wind power, things that, that already exist and are being refined right now as we speak. Uh, 
We have a few things coming up. Just to remind everybody, Wednesday, November 17th, uh, is the tree lighting ceremony. Is that at 6 o'clock or 6.30? 6.30, mm -hmm. I think. It's usually at 6.30. It's at 6.30. 6.30 in front of the fire department. Come a few minutes early. Wear your gloves because it's outside. But then we go inside and... No, we will not be going inside. We're not going inside? No. We don't go in the fire bay? Not this year. Not this, not year. this year. No, they didn't. Okay, well then I guess we won't go inside. Right, we'll be outside. All right, um, and then listening to our residents, and I have been having the same exact concerns that I feel like um, I know that our police department was, was kind of ordered to relax at the beginning of COVID, but I think it's time for an ordinance enforcement, an ordinance enforcement blitz, and a, a crackdown. Uh, we hear about the trash. We hear about garbage cans parking in the street, uh, abandoned cars, rat harborages, people not cleaning up their leaves, not cutting their grass, not cleaning up their snow coming up very soon. And I think that we probably need to start cracking down. Again, I think to enough time has passed that it's time to get our, our city back up to snuff and get that taken care of. And we have a few new officers now, so that's a good job. Send them out to crack down on these ordinances. And then speaking of ordinances, we had a scheduled the December 6th ordinance mini meeting at 6 p.m. So that's prior to our next meeting that is, a, is open to the public. So I just want to make sure we're still going to continue to have that meeting. Because we didn't really get to resolve everything at the last meeting. That's all I have to say. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Toussaint, Councilman Toussaint. Uh, just one comment. <coughs> I was concerned about people parking between 2 and 5, 2.30 or 5 in the morning. Well, for one thing about it, you know, we have a limited police staff. They, they don't really know, you know, well, this car is not here, that car, they can't spot them all. What I suggest to you, which I've had success with in the past, is I set my alarm at 2.30 in the morning, and then call the police department and see there's some cars out here that are not taken and go from there. And I've had tremendous success with that. So right now you identify it right at the time. I have. And I haven't seen them come out. Okay. I have done that. Because I was up. I didn't set my alarm. I was just up. And I saw that they parked that turn up. And like I said, the leaves were there. And I called. I didn't see anybody show up. Okay. I'm done. All right. Councilwoman Sawicki. Yes. A uh, couple things I want to echo the uh, Thanksgiving, you know, um, uh, welcome or happy Thanksgiving. A um, couple of other items. Uh, I brought this up a little while ago, and now that we know that we'll be getting some of the unusable items from Eastland, um, I know there are several. I thought uh, outdoor kind of garbage container. Yes. Um, that I'd love to see us have near the bridges. Yes. You know, uh, yes. Um, that I think would be very useful. Yes. I sent, I sent our uh, city manager, acting city manager, a um, link to some of the garbage doggy duty bags <laughs> that that can be um, put in the parks to take up uh, on what Mr. Hakeem offered. So the, um, the units are not terribly expensive and I think they would really be a valuable addition to our doggy park or doggy accessible park. Um, also, uh, there, there is one car <laughs> that's making me a crazy person. And this is a dark gray <laughs> or black charger that is racing through the neighborhood and the other day, there was a, an underage teenager literally hanging out the window of this car as it was speeding down the street. And when it got to the intersection, 
right in front of my house, it started doing donuts. My husband and I, along with several other neighbors, called the police. You know, of course, it's, you can't get a cop there in time because these people are racing, right? But you see it on several plots. You, you'll notice the donut marks. Yep. I'm hoping that he's going to blow a tire or something because well, I he's hope going not. around doing this all the time. But to have this teenager literally hanging out the window while this is going on, this is, this is endangerment. And I am happy and willing to sign an affidavit against this person if they get caught. You know, I want to be able to, to get this person and have their car taken away from them or do something that's going to prevent that from happening. Um, the other thing is uh, that there, this car has an obscured license plate. So you couldn't see the license plate in order to yes. give the police officers, and I might be wrong, I don't understand every aspect of the law, but I thought obscured license plates alone are illegal. Mm -hmm. And so I would certainly hope that you know, our police officers are paying attention. I have been. When I drive through the neighborhood, I look for this darn car so that I can call it in, you know, um, or at least note the address where this person is residing. Um, because this has happened time and time again. It's not a single event. I know. Right? I understand. He so almost ran me off the road. <laughs> we have to stop people that are abusing our neighborhoods like this. I was driving around through Harper Woods today and I was thinking, a beautiful day, and I'm thinking about how much I really like this city. And I encourage everyone, maybe we need a I love Harper Woods, you know, <laughs> kind of uh, movement here. But I, I have the distinct impression that some people are like disrespecting our community. Absolutely. And these people need to be stopped. They need to leave the community if they can't respect the people that are living here. Amen. And I, I'm darn tired of it. I agree with the residents who have mentioned the same thing tonight, and all of us, I think, feel the same way. Um, so we got to do something to stop, to okay. stop these miscreants. All right. Um, and with that, that's, that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Councilwoman Pies. Thank you. I'm glad to see one of our uh, candidates attending a council meeting tonight. I would hope that all of them would have maintained their interest in the city and <laughs> attended council meetings. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jarvis. Regarding the recycling, I'm going to make it like real quick just because we go over this at just about every meeting. We used to, sorry, we used to have it. We had to end it for a specific reason. We hope to have it again in the future. So it's, it's not right now, um, because we, it's not because we don't want it. So perhaps in the future. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, yes. I just, just finished a survey um, for I wanted to thank for Mr. Hakeem for, I wanted to thank Mr. Hakeem for his generous offer of $1,000 uh, for doggy waste bags. And I don't know who to go with this to, perhaps our Parks and Rec director can um, attend to this. Mr. Bobak is here in the audience, so he's heard this. That would be great. Um, also, I uh, <coughs> sat in on a uh, Zoom meeting today for the Michigan Municipal League, and they were talking about, um, they were talking about House Bill 4722 which is the short-term rental, which we've been going over here a lot and which we uh, passed a resolution recently about. It's still not looking good. Uh, they think it will go to the Senate uh, somewhere on November 30th when the legislators come back to Lansing. They're asking for cities to put together some materials to give them, to give Mr. Matt Bach over there uh, information about how our cities would be affected with a 30% short-term rental because this is essentially exactly what the uh, our legislators are offering right now um, I don't know if offering is a good word but if they pass 4722 then we would uh, 
possibly have up to 30% short-term rentals. And with that in mind, they suggested also that cities uh, work with schools on uh, contacting our legislators about this because with short-term rentals, you have less, you've got so much transient that transients that you're going to have fewer students and therefore you're going to have less funding for your schools and that's just going to open up a whole uh, another can of worms if you will that I hadn't even thought about so that was one suggestion from him and let's see okay I went oh regarding all the ordinance enforcement uh, problems is there a way we could put like a statement on the water bills or have like an annual letter go out to residents and I'm thinking about funding for that but perhaps that could come from uh, the funding that we get for the magazine the quarterly magazine also use some of that funds just for like one-time mass mailing on an annual basis saying you know no parking do this don't do that because obviously people aren't looking through the entire magazine or we, we can get creative right 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 well creative not only that, that would be great you, you can but um also lastly i wanted to say that um at at the november um at the council meeting the night before the election immediately following the, the council meeting we had an audience member a resident who was screaming, yelling at our city clerk and uh, made me really angry. I suggested that we were going to have him escorted out of here. I personally, and I think all of my council members will not, uh, fellow council persons, will not uh, put up with this kind of uh, yelling at city employees or even at someone in the audience it was it was at a level that i thought might get physically violent and uh, i know we often have a police officer here in the room that particular night it was crowded an officer was uh out in the lobby but if we could have someone just stay in the area generally until most of the residents are gone because that that particular situation really scared me um, and, and really, people shouldn't be taking anything out on our city clerk. Um, we're all up here to be yelled at pretty much or complained to, but our city clerk and our city manager and acting city manager and our attorney are off limits. So uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm not Councilman? Good. Good. OK, thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman Weave. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So I have just uh, a few things. Um, I was listening to the audience members, and a lot of things I agree with you on. Um, the, the FEMA issue, the flood insurance, and possibly getting um, FEMA to look at where our city look at what we can do so that we, our residents can get flood insurance, I think is an excellent idea. I know when I bought my house, I looked for flood insurance and tried to get it, but I was told that we could not because I was not in a flood, was in a flood zone. Right. And that the city, it just didn't support flood insurance. And then of course we had our flood, we actually had a flood recently. And the way our weather has been going, you know, that's still a strong possibility for the future. So I really do hope, you know, that the city looks into what we can do so that residents could get the flood insurance. Um, another thing was uh, I heard about the wish list from the police and fire department. Along with that wish list, when we get some funds in, I'm really hoping that we can do something with for our residents, such as fixing the sidewalks. Um, that part of the sidewalks is always going up because the tree, our city trees, are on the edge, so that the citizens do not have to pay for that. Um, because that's really not the citizen's fault. It happens because it's a city tree and the city tree uh, you know, pushes up the sidewalk. So I'm hoping that when we do get funds in, that maybe that's something that we can look at um, so the residents won't have to pay that. Um, 
And I know there's a big infrastructure bill that's coming down. It's supposed to be enough, I heard on TV, so I don't know how true it is, but I heard that's supposed to be enough to actually fix many of the pipes um, for the cities. So with that, if we do get that kind of money, I do hope that we start replacing some of these lead pipes. Our parts per million, I think, was four parts per million, was supposed parts per million or parts per billion, wherever it was, and that was one over what it should have been, but that's still lead contamination. So um, if we can start replacing those lead pipes with that kind of money, um, that would be great. Speed bumps. Um, our speed bumps that we put in are, so, are made so that our snow plows can go over. Um, I know the summer, as I drove around, I saw several speed bumps, which was interesting. Um, I, I, I think I passed at least three or four on different streets. So I know the city was putting in some speed bumps. Hopefully we'll put in a few more or come up with something to address these speeders. Um, the common device was one of the means, but I'm not sure. If it, I mean, personally, I just don't think common devices work very well. Um, I think the speed bumps do work, and I don't know what the ideals that we have as a city um, that we can do, but we really must address these speeders. Um, it is a dangerous situation. I see them in the morning on my way to work. I leave about 7 in the morning. It's still slightly dark, and I'll see people zooming off the side street, zooming down Beaconsville, and I've seen some cars, I've seen all the same car two or three times, and they almost hit two cars each time they did it. They just speed off the side street, just keep on zooming. And so there's got to be something we can do. Um, I used to see a lot of police enforcement. Perhaps that was before COVID. I don't quite see as much as I used to see. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether, you know, we're getting back on track with that. Um, officers stopping people, at least warning them or something, or, you know, I'm just saying, I, I personally just don't see that many officers out. So I do hope that, you know, that will be improved. Either more officers actually out there um, stopping people now. Um, so I know COVID was a concern. The ordinances, I agree with you. I used to like it when people got their little pink tickets on the, on the um, their little green tickets on the door, you know, about cutting the grass and moving the cars and doing other things because I knew our city was actually working, doing something, you know, trying to make the city better. Um, so I do hope that we'll pick back up. And I think that is it. Thank you. Okay. All right then. Well, I thank you everyone and I have a few questions not questions but a few statements and I was sharing that with um, after the election and I said I'm very grateful for everyone that voted for me and I thank you very much for that but I also know that some people are not going to like me very much in the very near future is because I intend to make sure that the ordinance of this community laws are followed and that also means that you store in a boat or, um, or um, a RV a camper uh, all those things if you look at the city ordinance those things are not allowed so if we are going to do one thing we need to do everything so if you are violating the rule you have an opportunity from this day forward to try to correct it before you are ticketed. Because my objective is to make sure that everyone follow the rules and ordinance of our city. And if you can't, then we, goodbye. As simple as that, it's goodbye. Because we all moved here for a reason. We moved here because we like the environment and the cleanliness and whatever and whatever of our community. But it takes all of us to do our part to maintain the city that we love. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, be prepared to pay the fines that comes along with that. 
because we are going to start enforcing the ordinance that maybe have been lax for various reasons, lack of manpower, COVID, whatever, but be on notice now, we will be enforcing those rules because I like my city, I love my city, and I want it to continue to be the place that I am proud of to be. I do not like when I go out there and people have a Monday pickup and they trash us out on Thursday. Are you kidding me? Or either you just let your leaves, and grass, and snow and everything. No. We have a responsibility. That's why we had the beautification. That's why we do beautification here. Because everyone has an opportunity to beautify their homes and maintain it. But we all have to work together. And so I hopefully from this day forward that we will begin to be able to put Harper Woods back on track, not allowing you to put out trash. I mean, you know when your trash day is. You know it's not Thursday, so why would you put trash out that's being picked up Monday or Tuesday? I see that all the time. And another problem is people parking on the grass. My God, you have a driveway, you have a street. Why would you park your vehicle on the grass? You're too lazy to juggle the cars around. Well, it's not acceptable. So those are things that we will be enforcing. Our police department is strapped. Every department here is going above and beyond. But as citizens, we have the responsibility also of calling the dispatchers or DPW or Parks and Rec, whatever, and report whatever we see, and we will try to make those make handle those problems. Um, oh, on Wednesday the 17th at 9 o'clock, McDonald's at Kelly and 8 Mile Road will be giving away turkeys. So anyone that wants a turkey or needs a turkey is more than welcome to come up to McDonald's at 9 o'clock starting until the turkeys are gone. So uh, you can post that on Facebook or whatever, but they will be giving away turkeys. And I, yes, November 17th. That's Wednesday, November 17th at 9 o'clock. So AM or PM? Excuse me? AM or PM? I didn't hear you. Morning or evening? Morning. AM. <laughs> 9 o'clock AM. I'm sorry, I should have said that. I didn't think it'd be 9 o'clock in the evening, but just to be on the right side, it would be 9 a.m. in the morning, and they will be giving away turkeys. And there's nothing, no criteria, you just be there to get your turkeys. So, uh, <laughs> all right, so. All right, with saying that, I thank everyone. And, and, and Mr. Hakeem, thank you so very much for the <laughs> donation. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, Mr. Jenny. Madam Mayor. Yes. Make a motion for adjournment. Yes. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meet and adjourn. Aye.